what's up everyone, Sergeant Arzward here, and today, we're reacting to, we're gonna sort of branch out, um, instead of, first of all, we're doing a different channel than we usually do, Kurt, 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 right, yeah, which aka is just a saying for in a nutshell, except in German, fun fact, they're the largest German YouTube channel, I think. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, anyways, I'm pretty sure I fixed the audio problems. So yeah, back to uploading as normal. Like literally, I... It's annoying. Audio is annoying. It really is. Let's go back. All right. Without further ado, let's get started. But yeah, instead of we're branching out, because instead of doing, not only doing a different channel, but we're doing a different subject. We're talking about dinosaurs. Yeah, that's cool. But usually we talk about humans and human history. In this video, it just came out 12 hours ago. It's number seven on trending, and it has 1.6 million views. And I saw my recommendations, and I was like, oh yeah, that looks cool. One of the greatest illusions in life is continuity. 66 million years ago, the continuity of the dinosaurs had been going on for around... What kind of dinosaur is that? ...and 165... Has a beak and teeth, what the heck? ...million years already, and it didn't seem this would change anytime soon. The world was warm and pleasant, and most of the land was covered with lush forests and... An pleasant? I'm not sure it was that pleasant. Like, have you seen some of the creatures during the dinosaur times? Incredible diversity of trees, flowers, ferns, and trillions of critters. Dinosaurs were ubiquitous and had diversified... Okay, I don't think these feathered creatures had teeth. I don't think any beaked creatures had teeth. Maybe they did not. ...into hundreds of species of all shapes and sizes. Titanotaurs, large, gentle giants, shared the world with famous beasts like Tyrannosaurus rex or Edmontosaurus. Yeah, there's this new theory that like dinosaurs had feathers instead of being all scaly. So that's probably why it shows them with feathers and all that, instead of how they're usually portrayed. Pectinodon hunted in the undergrowth while Edmontosaurus wandered coast. And it makes sense, they do sort of look like birds. Lions and swamps. An ancient paradise, a world of plenty, full of life. 66 million years ago, maybe on a Tuesday afternoon, life was the same as it had been the day before, or a thousand years before, or pretty much a million years before. Things were good for our feathered dinosaur buddies, until a tiny, tiny detail in the sky changed. If there were dinosaurs watching the stars, one night they may have noticed the appearance of a new star. Fun fact, we're gonna get hit by an asteroid in around 10,000 years, I think it was. A tiny dot that for many- And by asteroid I mean like a humongous asteroid, not like a normal tiny meteor. Many weeks slowly became bigger and brighter. Until one fateful day, it looked like another small moon in the night sky. And then, it faded from sight as it dipped into Earth's shadow. For a few more hours, the illusion of continuity was upheld. Until it was not anymore. In the morning, the object suddenly appears again. Now, almost as large as the sun in the sky and growing every moment, he heading for the coast near the Yucatan Peninsula. The story, the it takes the asteroid only seconds to pass through the thin layer between space and the ground to make contact, as it enters the atmosphere at almost 60 times the speed of sound. Let's stop time. Here, we see the unnamed asteroid about to commit speciocide. Larger than Mount Everest, it reaches from the ocean high into the atmosphere. What? 
larger than Mount Everest. That's humongous. What the heck? Atmosphere higher than passenger planes would fly millions of years later. At this moment, the world was one way. In a fraction of a second, it would be fundamentally different. Let's make the transition. As the asteroid hits the shallow ocean and the bedrock below, the energy of billions of nuclear weapons is released all at once as the Did you say billions? asteroid vaporizes. A flash of light illuminates the sky as an eerie bright white sphere grows over the Gulf of Mexico. Bedrock melts into seething hot plasma at tens of thousands of degrees Celsius. The thermal that is so crazy how, like, something that looks so small compared to Earth can turn into that. Radiation from the explosion. Like, that would be like someone throws a pebble at you and you just, ex and <laughs> your skin just explodes. Travels at the speed of light and immediately burns everything within a radius of about 1,500 kilometers, while the energy from the impact pushes so hard against Earth's crust that it loses all strength and flows away from the impact site like a liquid, creating a hole Whoa. 25 kilometers deep and 100 kilometers wide. The ocean is... Is that like... It's probably not still there, but like, I wonder... Is it still there? It's pushed back for hundreds of kilometers, like when a kid jumps into a puddle. What? As the crust bounces back, melted and flowing crust forms a temporary mountain oh, okay, yeah, it's not there, then. stretching 10 kilometers into the sky. An incredible amount of material is blasted into the higher atmosphere or even... I wonder if that would look really cool in space. Like, I wonder what that would look like. Even out into space, as much as 60 times the original mass of the asteroid. Whoa, but yeah, they say 60 times bigger than the asteroid. Okay, that is insane. But, like, there's people that say that some debris, like, even, like, pieces of dinosaur hit Earth. I mean, not Earth, the moon. Um, I'm getting that from the, the guy who does those Crash Course videos. He said that in a video. So I th thought that was interesting. And the thing is, there's no weathering on the moon. So there's no atmosphere or bacteria to break it down. Or water. So no erosion or weathering, so that stuff is still completely intact. So that would be pretty cool to analyze. The violence of the strike is felt everywhere on Earth within minutes. The only thing is, it's in a bunch of tiny little pieces. And so is a gigantic explosion. A magnitude 11 earthquake may be the most powerful quake any living thing has ever witnessed in billions of years. It is so insanely what? strong that in India, it might have shaken gigantic lava fields and causes volcanic eruptions that would last for 30,000 years and cover half of the Indian subcontinent with lava. Wait, is this what Earth actually looked like back then? Even on the side of Earth opposite the impact, the ground still moved by several meters. Nobody would sleep through this day. The gigantic explosion crashes against the atmosphere with unprecedented violence and causes a shockwave that reaches speeds of more than 1,000 kilometers per hour near the site of impact, similar to the hyper-hurricanes on gas giants like Neptune. In middle America, basically any soil, vegetation or animal is just shredded into pieces and catapulted thousands of kilometers away. Now the previously displaced oceans return. As the temporary mountain at the site of impact collapses, a ring of tsunamis as high as one kilometer, enough to cover... Did you just say one co... <laughs> Excuse me, did he just say one kilometer? For all skyscrapers humans would ever build, heads in all directions. As they crash into the coasts of the continents surround As you know, the the biggest danger like the biggest danger that would come out of all this was the fact that all the ash would go into the would go and cover the atmosphere. Meaning that it would do this humongous greenhouse effect making Earth extremely hot. Um and making basically nothing be able to grow for a while. It was 
It was awful. And they basically nothing survived. And in the impact, they will drown thousands of kilometers of coastline. 15 hours later, some of the waves that get refracted around South America will still tower as much as 100 meters into the sky. But we still haven't talked about the worst thing yet. A lot of the debris yeeted into space will orbit Earth for... What did you just say? Worst thing yet. A lot of the debris yeeted into... Did you say yeeted? ...space will orbit Earth for thousands of years. Some... Thousands? ...may hit the Moon or even Mars. But most... Mars? That's crazy. ...of it comes right back. When things fall through the atmosphere at such speeds, they get very hot, as in hundreds of degrees hot. And this happens to millions of tons of material everywhere. This rapidly heats up the atmosphere to insane temperatures. We don't know exactly how hot it got or how long this heat shock lasted, but there are two ideas here. Either the air was heated to hundreds of degrees for a few minutes, or to thousands of degrees for around one minute. In any case, the air became as hot as the inside of an industrial oven. How bad the global effects of this were is contested, but if enough heat reached the surface, a lot of plants and animals would have died very quickly if they couldn't bury themselves or escape into caves. The heat, together with raining debris, also may have ignited material on forest floors and sparked wildfires as the oh Earth rotated God. under the searing hot blue. In a few hours, massive wildfires were probably burning around the globe. Some of them may have lasted for months and turned Earth into a horrifying, hot, hellish version of itself. As the day of the impact draws to an end, many of the dinosaurs are already dead, but the worst is still to come. The gigantic plume of vaporized material reaches the upper atmosphere and spreads around the whole globe. Together with the soot from the burning planet and the aerosols generated at impact, the planet sinks into a deep darkness with only the remaining raging fires illuminating the scenery. Jesus Christ, like this is what I imagine hell to look like. I just... I just... Whatever plants survive the firestorms will now be starved for sunlight as global photosynthesis is temporarily shut down. Within days, temperatures crash as much as 25 degrees Celsius. The oceans were especially hard hit. The lack of sunlight killed over 90% of plankton, which formed the basis of the... ...food web of... I mean, an emergency alert. Cool. Marine life. Ultimately, this would kill off the large marine reptiles and ammonites that used to dominate the seas. The biosphere the survivors now find themselves in is like an alien landscape. Ash, debris and the burned remains of the formerly lush and blooming life cover the ground. The sky is dark and it's cold and fresh food. How do you even breathe with all that stuff in the air? Food is scarce while fungi thrive. Hmm. I guess you can eat some fungi. Right? For months and years, the planet will be a hostile and deadly place. The sudden global winter will last for decades. Oh yeah, there's going to be a lot of dead animals to eat too. So... Ah, uh, there's some... There's some bright side. At least 75% of all species on Earth will just vanish from existence. Well, and so, as the day ends, the world is suddenly different. The continuity that went on for millions of years is no more. The era of the dinosaurs is over, just like that. Eventually, from the ashes of the old world, survivors emerged. Birds that are the direct descendants of the dinosaurs and mammals that would eventually become the dominant animals on the planet. Yeah, back then, animals were just these tiny little rats. Before, they used to be big. They used to be the dominant species, just like they are now. And then an extinction event happened with the mammals. And then the dinosaurs took over. And then the mammals, I mean, the dinosaurs got extinct. Now the mammals are at the top again. Without and now the reptiles are the ones that are tiny little lizards. Without the asteroid, who knows what life on Earth would look like today?
without the sudden disruption of dinosaur continuity that completely changed the planet and all life on it, we might have never had the opportunity to become what we are today. It's not clear how long the human era will last. So far, modern humans have been around for 0.1% of the time the dinosaurs were. And in this short amount of time, we've achieved impressive feats, from making the world our own to reaching space and splitting the atom. Yet our future and our long-term survival are not a given. If we're not careful, it could end in an instant, like the age of the dinosaurs ended. But in contrast to them, we know that our continuity is fragile, even if it doesn't feel like it. We can be prepared and be vigilant and hopeful. What is this bird doing in the museum? If we're lucky, our journey will go on for a long, long time. Speaking of journeys, we want to address something in the spirit of transparency. Kotzkazakt has changed in the last two years. We've become more than a YouTube channel or animation studio and now also run a paper shop that sells oh, okay, cool. um. hundreds of thousands of calendars, posters and notebooks. Paper products are our roots and we actually started out creating posters, books and... Okay, anyways. Thank you all for watching, everyone. That was pretty cool. And... I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually more interested in the time, like, right before the dinosaurs and the time right after the dinosaurs than the actual dinosaurs. So, yeah, I don't know. But anyways, thank you all for watching. And if you guys like this kind of stuff, or every once in a while I do videos about non-human history, then just let me know. By the way, how come every time in, hum in history class, like, they always talk about human history. Like, just call it human history class, then. Just, there's, as far as I know, at least in my school, there's, an, or, yeah, there's no, like, class that talks about the dinosaurs and all the way back then. Like, isn't that history, isn't that stuff important to history, too? Like, and even in human history, they only talk about, like, right? They only talk about the beginning of civilization. They don't talk about before that. And if they do, it's, like, for two weeks. Anyways, um, that's my little rant out of the way. Thank you all for watching, everyone. And leave your suggestions for new videos down, the, down below. And goodbye. Hello, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel and you know turn on the notification bell thingy and if you didn't then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down oh yeah that would be greatly appreciated and while you're at it go ahead and watch my other videos they're probably just as good and if not better than this one right now except for my oldest videos don't watch those and you know subscribe to these people down here my fellow sergeants they're other YouTubers that I either know or I have in high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching and have a great day.